who's been using the Pioneer equipment or Pioneer mixer is gonna feel right at home. You know, I play simple records at times, but if I have the facilities of filters, reverb, spirals, uh, you know, noise gates, things like that, and when you are playing peak time, which is, you know, what I mainly do now, I need those functions around me. Everything is generally where it was in the previous iterations, but now it's been expanded. If you would look into a crowd and you would DJ with this new mixer, it's not like everything would feel totally different. One of the things that Pioneer improved on a lot from previous mixers is that the sound quality really has gone above and beyond. I was quite astounded by the sound of this. It sounded like nothing that they produced before. It had a great warmth on the bottom end. Bit rates, 24-bit, 96, 48K. I find it's better for when you're using vocals or a live instruments, because you really capture the essence. To work days, weeks, months, years on something, and then to bounce it down and take it into a club and play it through a mixer and through a system that represents the, the way that it should sound is a huge deal. They really focused on quality sound and then really taking that to a whole other level, and it was already good. The low end on it is very full, it's very big. The mids are very smooth, the highs are very clear. There's no distortion, there's no filtering on it. It's got a very, very nice sound, a very musical sound. Yeah, the curve of the fade, it, it, you know, it's another big thing for me as well. What I was always experiencing with the Pioneer is I put the fader up and it would always hit the wall very, very, very quickly. I like the curve to be natural and gradual. I've been playing on it earlier and the ranges are now a very, very neat and nice and how they should be. On the old mixers, cutting the bass took too much of the mid away. When that happens, it sounds like I'm, the DJ's just turning the volume down. Let's say you want to EQ the kick out of a track, you still have the bass, you still have the vocal, the mid-range clarity and the high end is still very, very clear. It definitely sounded a lot better. You know, when I was cutting the bass, there wasn't a loss of energy like that was before. Whenever you're in the mix or using effects, you can tell the processing is getting a beating. And this won't happen anymore. There's twice as much bitrate going on. The benefits of 64-bit processing allows so much more dedication to effects, loops, send and returns, um, where the mixer can process everything and dedicate that 64-bit straight to where it's needed. There's a noticeable difference. You're not hitting any compression anywhere, whether it's real compression or whether it's digital compression. It feels like everything's got room to breathe in the mix. Floating point processing allows the DJ to be very creative with all the effects on the mixer and not to have to worry about the, the DSP clipping of the product itself. When you're walking into a room and you notice that it sounds very bad, distorted, and you know, the guy before me is just pinned and redlined. This one gives a real warning now. When you go over, the clip indicator lights up. From a DJ's point of view, sometimes what they can hear in their booth monitors is not necessarily what they can hear on the outside. That should catch their eye and tell them that they, they're driving it too hard and to turn it down and to not stop slashing. <laughs> The VU lights and the mixer are very, very accurate in predicting the sound, which is actually more reflective of what the, the audio signal is. It's a lot more precise. It has that, um, that capacity to be almost in a live performance the way a mixing desk would be. When you're out there in a club bashing it out, you want it to be high quality. And I'm very happy with all these enhancements. For me, effects really create a whole other layer to the whatever song you're playing. If you plan that properly at the right part of the drop, you can just get everybody riled up. So the color effects have changed as well. The parameter is very fun uh, to max it out or to have it more subtle. You can really use it as uh, an effect that's not dominating the track. I just really like that we've got two parameters that you can control now. 
Even the, the collar knobs are bigger too though. It really separates the section from the EQ part. On one of the buttons, which used to hold the gate uh, comp, apparently it's still in there, but it's covered by a, a sweep button now. The sweep is something that I, I always used to like on the DJM 800. I'm glad it's back and I'm glad that we've got this parameter knob to change the way it behaves. And then also, when we go down here, we can use the gate. My new favorite feature on the color effects is the dub echo to infinity with maxing out the parameter uh, knob on there. I love what they did with this mixer, they added four different effects. That ping pong effects is really, really cool, I really like that. It creates a big stereo field with the dramatic left to right effect. The good old vinyl break effect. And this was my favorite feature on the RMX. And it, now it's here on the DJM 900 Nexus 2. The Helix is great. It's a pitch effect, pitches it up and down, and it's non-destructive as well. So if you do grab a loop, pitch it all the way up, mangle it around, send it all the way back down, mangle it around, you can always return to that, that part where you sampled it. When I saw this, I was like, this cannot be true. This is really like a small EQ that's EQing the effects, just like I do in my songs in production. So it means if I want to affect just the mid-range and the highs of a particular track that I'm doing a delay or an echo out, I can just filter out each of the frequencies. So this way you can use the echo without beats kind of bumping into each other. With the X-Pad, now it's a grid like that, you can instantly get to what measurement you want. If you want to have a one bar, two, four, or even smaller, like a 16, you just hit one button and it's it. It's perfect. This will just be a lot of fun jumping back and forth from crazy signatures. But as someone that uses a lot of effects, this beat effects indicator with a blue light is super handy. If I've got something assigned to crossfader B, they're both gonna show up and I can see exactly what I'm doing with my effects routing. Double time. Down another channel, we're gonna send it down channel one. Gonna affect it. That's that. I do love the way the send and return works. It's just really intuitive and you can put it onto the channel that you need super quickly. You know, taking things out of the studio and I'm putting it in DJ booth is, is a lot easier now. Because a lot of people are using guitar pedals amongst other things. Before you had to go to the send and return and then you couldn't use the other effects. So it's cool that you can actually now double it up with the effects. The way they've located and access to send returns, you have a quarter inch jack as well as a USB so you can flip between the two. The potential for the USB send is great. Being able to connect uh, an iPad with an app opens up a new dimension for the mixer. The fact that there's an RMX 1000 iPad app now makes it very, very useful. So I can actually bring one with me, put up my iPad, and if I want to use the RMX 1000, I can just use the USB cable and just link in. By having two USB slots on the top, if you DJ before and is also using your computer, it makes change over. For me, it breeds, I don't even have to do anything. If I'm playing off my laptop and I haven't got to worry about like quickly playing off the CDJ, uh, that one extra track while he sets all his stuff up. So yeah, just really convenient. I get asked more than anything else, 
do you have a spare headphone adapter? I start off the season with maybe 15 quarter inch adapters and at the end of the season I've got none. And in back-to-back -back occasions as well. It's just easy to plug in two headphones at the same time. Uh, you see a lot of DJs doing that now with, you know, the special extension. But now it's inbuilt and it's ready to use. We've gone back up to four phone inputs. Every now and then you do get a DJ that wants to use three decks. It means that you can position things correctly. So this one's got the phono and this one's got the CD, but in reality, they're the other way around. You can put them where they actually are. I'm a very big fan of using the crossfader. I still scratch and I still do tricks going back and forth. This fader on the Nexus 2 is even better. That you don't have to think so much about, okay, where is this button? I, I want to do this. Now I know I can go straight to that. Okay, I want to get to a, a quarter inch delay. Boom, it's right there. I've got the parameter that I can adjust there. And these are the things that allow me to create drama within a set or to create an effect. It's definitely going to change the way I perform sound-wise and just functionality. In order for the DJs to really be able to just walk on deck and have a familiar environment where, you know, I know where I'm at. It's like I could be anywhere. It's like being home. Pioneer to me, it's like being home.